Good morning. Welcome again to Morning Devotion, and thank you again so much for our time together. Today is the second day of our annual church fast in which we just drink water, no food for three days, and we fast and pray. It's a weekend, so this isn't difficult for you. Now, I want, to un want you to understand what's going on in your body right now. Today is going to be a little more difficult day for you. If you didn't stop the caffeine early enough, you're going to have some headaches, drink a lot of water, that'll help flush that out. You're going to be feeling a little foggy brain. You're going to be a little more fatigued. So light schedule today. Just read your Bible and fast and pray. This whole season is not about, you know, going out and enjoying yourself. It's about denying yourself and seeking God, focusing your life upon God. So a lot of time in prayer today, a lot of time in worship today. Take a few extra naps and you'll feel fine. For our devotional thought today, I want us to talk a little bit about Matthew chapter 4. What attracted people to Jesus? Now, you know he wasn't Mr. GQ because Isaiah said that there was no beauty or comeliness about him that we should desire him. If, if you saw Jesus walking down the street, he was just average. He was just plain. There was nothing physical about him as a, as a human specimen that would make everybody want him. He, Jesus would not have been cool. I'm sorry. Jesus would not have been cool. He was just plain. So what attracted people to Jesus? Well, verse 15, land of Zebulun and land of Naphtali, the way to the sea along the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people living in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the shadow of death, a light has dawned. From that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. The thing that attracted people to Jesus was light. Jesus, the Bible says that in him was life, and that life was the light of men. Now, the Bible teaches us that there are four things that, that release light. One, the unfolding of the Word of God. Number two, the justice of God. Number three, the presence of God. Number four, the life of God. Now, if we want to see people attracted to Jesus, it's not going to come because we use, you know, movie stars and actors and actresses to try to draw people. That's building a social movement. That doesn't, that doesn't get people saved or bring people to church. It's not because we use people of influence. The thing that attracts people to Jesus, I did not say to church, I said to Jesus, and there is a big difference. The thing that attracts people to Christ, not to a social movement, not to a country club church, the thing that attracts people to Christ is a release of light. Now, number one, that means we should teach the Word of God. We don't have to be fancy. We don't have to be flashy. Just unfold the Word of God. That releases light. Now, I heard one Christian say, you know, I was always taught not to bore people with the Bible. Well, you know, for carnal Christians, the Bible is boring. But for unsaved people, teaching the Word of God releases light. It attracts people. Now, you can do it how other people say, or you can do it how the Bible says, and you'll see that there's a difference in your success rate. The life of God, seeing people healed and ministered to and, and being quickened, release of life of the Holy Spirit, that attracts people to Christ. Justice, where everybody in the church is treated the same. Really, when it talks about the justice of God, there's no favoritism. There's no place for rich people to sit and poor people to sit. That doesn't attract people to Christ. That attracts Christians that are looking for status. All right, I paid 4000 so I get to seat here. I mean, it's like we have business class and first class seats in church. Ah, no, that doesn't attract the world. That attracts carnal Christians that are trying to show they've arrived in life. And the presence of God. A person said, Pastor Sumrall, Pastor should we have a, a seeker-sensitive church? I said, no, you want to have a God-sensitive church. The most important thing in church is the presence of God. Now, if you want to ask me one of the things I'm praying for more than anything else in this fast, it's for miracles. And I'm not talking about charismatic carnival, let's entertain the Christian miracles. I'm talking about real miracles in the connect groups in your offices, in your everyday life, not just in services. That when we pray for cancer, it leaves people's bodies. I'll never forget the first blind person I prayed for and their eyes were opened, or the first deaf person, or the first crippled person. I want to see all that again. I want the new generation to see what I got to be a part of as a young man. I want to see that kind of a release of the presence of God and the life of God. 
I want to see miracles like I've never seen them in my life. I want to see miracles like I saw them when I was young. I want to see bones popping back into place and people getting out of wheelchairs and walking, not, not getting back into them after they perform for the TV cameras, but, but walking and never getting back to that wheelchair again. I want to see people throw away crutches and never pick them back up again. Not when the cameras are off, go back and get the crutches. Young people, we want to see the power of God in this generation. And it's not going to come by building a social club. It's going to come by a release of light.